glad to see you all this morning. Okay, well, hello. I am Dr. Karen Edwards, and I am president of Clark College, and I'm very happy that you are here this morning, and I'm here to be with you to deliver the college, um, State of the College Address. I'm sure I speak for all of us when I say that I look forward to the day when we can all be here together in person. As you can see, there are several empty chairs, um, people opting out of not coming together, but that's okay because we have the benefit of being um, both in person and online, so good. We did give a lot of thought to today's format about being in person, understanding the concerns that folks have, but careful consideration throughout the planning process, we've learned over the last two years that the pandemic is not predictable. Um, it's not controllable by me, certainly, and we just have to adapt and change to the whatever's happening at the time. Again, while I'm unable to speak to everybody in person today, I am grateful for the opportunity to be both online and with you all here in Geyser. Given all of the turbulence and the disruption that we've gone through in our work at the college, um, I lost my place, I'm sorry, I'm between teleprompters, so <laughs> one moment, let me catch up. Given all of the turbulence and the disruption in the way we go about the important work of the college, it is a little difficult to know what to say about the state of the college, but one thing I am very compelled to say is thank you. We've been through a lot and it's been very difficult. And even as we manage through these uncertain times, we must also look past the pandemic and keeping our sights on the vibrant future that Clark College has. COVID does not define us, and it will not get in the way, or, or the challenges that it has posed will get in the way of our long-term plans and goals. As Michelle Obama suggests, it is possible for us to have, one, have your feet planted both in reality, but also pointed in the direction of progress. Before I get started in the substance of my address, I do want to offer our land and labor acknowledgments. Clark College sits on the ancestral and current lands of the federally recognized tribes of the Cowlitz and Lower Columbia peoples. Truth and acknowledgement are critical to building mutual respect and connection across all barriers of heritage and difference. We pay respects to the indigenous elders, past and present, and we respectfully consider the many legacies of violence, erasure, displacement, migration, and settlement that brings us together. We also acknowledge that our nation has benefited and profited from the free enslaved labor of black people. We honor the legacy of the African diaspora and black life, the knowledge, skills, and human spirit that persevere despite violence and white supremacy. I want to thank our college community again, for especially our outstanding faculty and staff. The grit and resilience I've seen in the Clark community since my arrival not just two years yet, um, has been outstanding. With a global pandemic, uncertain budget circumstances, and changing leadership, we have come together to serve students, our community, and most importantly, each other. Our college leadership is moving forward with a unified vision, and we're creating ways for faculty, staff, and students to engage and feel like their voices are heard. I especially want to acknowledge Clark College Board of Trustees, Jeannie Bennett as our chair, and Paul Spear, vice chair, Rika Strong, Christian Conseco Juarez, and our newly appointed uh, trustee, Denise Gideon. I so appreciate you all. <laughs> also want to acknowledge the Clark College Foundation uh, board members, if we have any here, the alumni board, um, and our community partners, and there are many in the audience. We thank you so much for your support, and please know how much we appreciate what you're doing. I also want to take a moment to acknowledge the executive cabinet of uh, Clark College. Um, my thought leaders, my thought partners, uh, my armor bearers, uh, 
my everything, <laughs> my posse. That's who they are. <laughs> Thank you all. Um, really appreciate you too. Mm -hmm. And let me take a moment uh, to thank some of our community partners for their support of the college. The list is way too long for me to list them all, but I will start with our uh, state uh, and uh, state legislators. If we have any uh, local city and county elected officials, I see some nods. Thank you so much for your support. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I want to acknowledge our alumni, and I'm sure that there are some of them here in the room this, uh, this morning as well, um, and area employers who hire our graduates and uh, provide work-based learning opportunities in the areas of healthcare, culinary, teaching, automotive, mechanics, um, business, technology, human services, <laughs> uh, surveying, journalism, and so many more. Thank you all. Mm -hmm. There are agencies such as Workforce Southwest, the Columbia River Economic Development Council, the Chamber of Commerce, the High Tech Council, um, we have representative here, uh, College Career Connect, with whom we work to increase economic and uh, community development, as well as workforce development. We appreciate your partnership and support as well. Mm -hmm. We have our partners in education, including the local school districts, the Migrant Education Program, the State Board of Community and Technical Colleges, and Washington State University at Vancouver, who we continue to work alongside to provide seamless opportunities for our students to transfer and meet critical workforce needs, like our healthcare, uh, like in healthcare through our dual enrollment program in nursing. Thank you to our educational folks, if we have any. Mm -hmm. To members of the college's Social Equity Council, the Southwest Washington Equity Coalition, LULAC, NAACP, thank you for joining us in our quest for social justice. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, I want to thank all of our donors. Um, your overwhelming support of Clark College is so inspiring and so impactful. On behalf of every faculty, student, or staff who's benefited from your generosity, please accept my sincere gratitude. <laughs> Clark College is the community's college. Our place in the community is providing opportunities, advancing upward mobility, and meeting educational and workforce needs. These partnerships we are building will only add to the health and welfare of our region, so our local communities will not only survive, but thrive. We value the contributions of all of our community partners and look forward to bringing you along with us on our journey to becoming. So that's another thing I'm getting used to. I don't get claps when I'm in Zoom. I'm trying to build in time to receive the applause. Thank you. <laughs> I've been reflecting recently on the changes at the college, and I was reminded of the book Becoming by former First Lady Michelle Obama. She writes in the book, and I quote, for me, becoming isn't about arriving somewhere or achieving a certain aim. I see it instead as forward motion, a means of evolving, a way to reach continuously towards a better self. She adds, the journey doesn't end. This passage resonates with me, I think maybe for obvious reasons, because when I think about Clark community, our Clark community, we too are in a state of becoming. There's been shifting and moving, growing and cutting back, changing, morphing, developing, all of that suggests becoming uh, to me. The impact of internal and external forces, such as the changing demographics, funding changes, industry needs, and just the overall future of work. This is what's driving uh, the change for us. So, in some cases, we're hitting the refresh button, we're leaving some things behind, and collectively looking ahead to what is to come. I would like to use uh, my time today to share some perspective on what our journey um, for Clark College would look like as we embark on strategic planning, 
new funding models, shifting priorities, increasing collaborations, building a new campus, and continuing to infuse social equity in all of our work. As I think of my vision for Clark College, the words that come to mind for me, equity, excellence, exuberant, and evolving. How's that for alliteration? Yeah. <laughs> Is there an English faculty in the room? I'm hoping for points on that one. <laughs> equity, I say, strong, uh, a strong central element for the college is our commitment to racial equity and social justice. I'm so proud of our Board of Trustees for adopting a statement in their August meeting um, that outlines their dedication to Clark's identity as an anti-racist institution. This statement, along with the vision statement from the State Board and our own social equity plans, infuses racial equity into all of our work that we do here at the college. The Aspen Institute defines community college excellence as an institution that provides leadership and engages in practices that significantly, significantly improve student learning, completion, and employment, especially for growing populations of students of color and low-income students. Based on our latest recorded data in 2018, approximately a third of our students completed their degree requirements in three years. And as we disaggregate that statistic, we see some disparities among identity groups. For example, our black students' completion rate was 15%. Latinx was 16%. And combined Native American and Pacific Islanders was 27. And my challenge to you all today is to sit with these numbers, reflect on them for a moment, and ask, are these the numbers we're aiming for? I think we can do better. Exuberant, because it's a fun word to use, but also fits, um, I say, because we've all witnessed the power of education and how it changes not only the lives of individuals, but families and communities. It has the power to really shift and change people and things. And so given that, I think we should be bold and loud and excited and high-spirited about the work that we do. Yes. <laughs> I want our students to know that when we show up, they are getting big and they're getting the best. Evolving, I use meaning that there's an agility and a nimbleness that we must maintain Various think tanks and educational organizations have noted a significant shift in higher education just even in the past two years. They assert the unlikeliness that we will return to that state that we were pre-COVID. The future of higher ed will be different, specifically in how we deliver education, what we offer, and to whom. Therefore, we need to be ready to respond, come what may. In her book, Michelle Obama talks about the process of becoming known. I would like for us to consider what we are known for. Clark is a pillar in our community, known for accessible education and training and developing our local workforce, and a wonderful place to get a start. Some even jokingly say we're known as the largest high school in the area. <laughs> jokingly, I said. <laughs> and that's all good. But I would challenge us to become known for closing opportunity gaps, closing equity gaps, known for breaking the cycle of poverty, known for breaking systems of oppression, known for enrolling, retaining, and graduating, and placing our students at a rate higher than any other institution of higher ed in the state. To achieve these, the Guided Pathways Student Success Model continues to guide our work in increasing student success. Staff and faculty have worked diligently, excuse me, um, to identify high wage jobs in demand and in demand jobs in our region and to map those to our programs. Guided Pathways funds um, provide us with additional resources to bring innovative technology 
as well as training for departments on effective use of data for assessing outcomes and strategic planning purposes. Through Guided Pathways and others, we've been able to embed student voices and participation in many activities and projects underway at the college to ensure their perspective is front and center in decision making and planning. Additionally, some of the planning and growth in this area will be directed by the recent passage of two Senate bills, um, two recent Senate bills addressing equity and access in higher education in Washington. The bills outline new requirements for anti-racist training at the college for both employees and students and increase, the, increase and diversify our full-time faculty. The development and implementation of an equity-centered plan and routine campus climate surveys. At Clark College, we're fortunate that through our Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, we are providing some of this training and more to come. You can clap. <laughs> We have officially kicked off our strategic, our strategic planning process. This is an opportunity for us to redefine who we want to be as a college community. The process will yield an equity-centered plan, new mission, and vision. We have contracted with Education Northwest, who will help us facilitate the development and implementation of the plan through an inclu inclusive process, meaning we want some of you all involved, and you'll have the opportunity to do that. The process will include focus groups, interviews, and lots of information gathering. Again, I encourage you to apply to become part of this important work that's happening at the college. Led by Paul Wickline, I think it's here, yes, and uh, Dr. Willard, uh, it's my hope that our revised plan will provide concrete steps to how we can get to our desired future and spotlight our dedication and commitment to equitable student success. It's easy to, divine, to define student success through statistics and data and charts and numbers, but my challenge to you all today is to think about what those statistics look like off the page. What are the experiences of our students? How do they feel on campus or for some of them in a Canvas shell or Zoom session? With the recent passing of bell hooks, I read about the engaged pedagogy. And I'm interested to learn what approach are we taking to teaching and learning in our classrooms. One student voice we're featuring this morning is that of our ASCC president, uh, and must add, future neuroscientist, Xander Hawkins. Uh, Xander, come on up. Please join me in welcoming Xander for the State of the Student message. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Edwards. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. My name is Xander Hawkins, and I am the president of ASCC, our student government here at Clark College. It is my job to represent the student body and to speak on behalf of my fellow students at events like these. I am honored to deliver today's Clark College's second annual State of the Students Address. I would like to acknowledge that I am not the first in my family to go to college. My parents both went before me, one of them at this very school. My dad, a first-generation college student, actually has over 300 credits and four associate's degrees from this beloved school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, which he came back to time and time again when it came time to change careers. <laughs> he never went to another school. Uh, since, oh, sorry. Mm, yeah, since this day and through to the present, since his day and through to the present. <clears throat> Clark College has been a family where all those in our community who wish to learn can come to do so. However, the last couple of years have been exceedingly difficult for that family. Before the pandemic, we all took for granted the opportunity to safely gather in cafeterias, classrooms, and lecture halls to learn, discuss, and work together. In my father's time here, Clark College bustled with a full family of thousands of students here on campus. When the pandemic first hit, we all held hope that we could return to that norm quickly. As social distancing protocols were outlined and we were all sent home, the Clark College student body and the community as a whole showed remarkable fortitude and resolve to do things right and get back to normal. Sadly, things have dragged on much longer than some of us expected. 
Last year, when my predecessor, President Josiah Joner, gave the first State of the Students message, operations were all online, and his government was working hard to keep student involvement going. They did an excellent job, and this year's government continues their work through every means we can. Just two weeks ago, the involvement fair for the winter quarter, we had spent so much time planning, was unfortunately canceled due to skyrocketing Omicron cases in Clark County. While we also work to host online events and improve the resources student have students have access to, disappointments like the cancellation of the involvement fair serve as a reminder that this pandemic is far from over. I won't tell you that everything is going poorly at the school, far from it. Our Penguin Pantry continues to provide hundreds of food boxes each month to those that need them. Club, <laughs> yeah, let's get a round of applause for the Penguin Pantry, yeah. Clubs and student-led programs also continue to operate and thrive, even online. New clubs have been formed this year as well. And though the situation is changing constantly, more and more in-person classes have been held this year. And with good fortune, that trend will continue. Having finally attended my first in-person class just a couple of weeks ago, I felt a deep hope and optimism for what the future could look like at our school. But let me make one thing clear. The current situation at our school is not yet the new normal. We are still in an ongoing crisis, a crisis which has rocked the foundation of our school and deeply impacted student involvement. As the rest of the year plays out and the pandemic continues, it is important that we all support one another and do everything we can to foster a sense of community among the Penguin family, even online. And, as the pandemic comes to a close, whenever that might be, it will be critical that we work to address the damage made and to reach out to the disadvantaged and ignored to equitably raise enrollment and build our school back better. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sandra. We appreciate you and, uh, and, and sharing the students' perspective. So another quote I want to share. Um, if we want to reach our potential, the, the potential of our ability to contribute significantly to building a better world, our challenge is this. Our excellence relies to a great degree on the initiative of individuals. That's a quote from Mrs. Obama. For us, that means every faculty, every staff, every student, every administrator, and all the rest of you in the room. I'm excited to share with you some examples of how different departments across the college are working towards student success. Our IT team uh, has proven over the last two years that they can move mountains. <laughs> They have creatively found solutions to every curveball that was thrown. In addition to supporting campus and remote operations, they have planned for the gradual return to campus. Our classrooms have been adapted with, technolo have been adapted with technology to support hybrid courses, and they're continually seeking recent technology to ease the transition, like finding microphones that fit, that work with a face mask. You can clap. <laughs> <laughs> Additionally, the Technology Committee has been persistent in supporting new technologies on campus and prioritizing accessibility in each project that they implement in partnership with our Disability Support Services. DSS, as we call it, served over 500 students with accommodations last year and they're currently recruiting for Clark's first peer mentor to work specifically with students who have disability. And our student affairs colleagues are putting forth effort for our college to become recognized as a caring campus. The objective of this program is to increase retention and student success by creating and cultivating caring in a caring environment through staff training that intentionally cultivates a, a sense of belonging. The Caring Campus program recognizes and leverages the value of connectedness for increasing the likelihood that students will continue on to achieve their goals. 
Clark College continues to provide support to students experiencing financial hardship or unanticipated expenses when necessary through, emergency, uh, through our emergency grant program. The partnership with the foundation, the combination of funding from generous donations, including our CARES Fund, the Higher, Ed emergency, Higher Education Emergency Relief Fund, HERF for short, Clark College grants, and the student emergency um, grants through those funds, we were able to provide over $3 million in financial assistance to our students this past fall. <laughs> A, that demonstrates the tremendous need our students are exhibiting, but also our ability to respond. Support for our students is also provided through the Penguin Pantry. In the 2020-21 academic year, over 31,000 pounds of food were distributed to over 1,000 students, and we, on track, we are on track to achieve those same numbers. Again, 31,000 pounds of food. <laughs> Salada soup. <laughs> over the last year, the college was able to write off almost uh, well, $900,000 in outstanding student debt. Yes. <laughs> Uh, we were able to use our federal funding um, through the CARES Fund to do that. In total, over the five quarters, this benefited 14, over 1,400 unique students, covering their outstanding debt to the college. In doing so, it allows these students to return to us, to re-enroll, and to start college with a fresh start. Our academic departments are full um, of amazing updates and exciting programs to share as well. Large Education Program and Clark College Library have launched a collaboration with Journal Storage to offer our incarcerated students at large the ability to do research in an offline environment. Our librarians are developing a workshop that will assist incarcerated students with navigating research. That too is amazing. Um, they are not able to access the internet or go online, but that shouldn't hinder them from getting a good education. The Clark College Mesa program is both humbled and thankful to the Cowlitch Indian tribe for their investment made through the uh, Cowlitch Tribal Foundation for Clark County in the amount of $350,000. <laughs> We intend to uh, level the playing field for underserved students. With these funds, local black, indigenous, and other students of color will gain access to higher education through textbook loans, scholarships, field trips to universities, and competitive research internships. Okay. <laughs> I'm so proud of my college. <laughs> Last year, Southwest Washington Regional Alliance for Inclusive Science Excellence, otherwise known as RAISE, that project was selected by the Howard Hughes Medical Institute to be part of the Inclusive Excellence 3.0 program. RAISE is a partnership of science departments between Washington State University, Clark College, and Lower Columbia College. The overarching goal of the program is to improve the science transfer partnerships between those institutions and focus on BIPOC students from other rep and other represented students so that they are transferring into those STEM-related fields. The RAISE team will receive a minimum of $250,000 over the next five years to continue this important work. And I'd like to acknowledge Travis Kubota and Delilah uh, Paredes, um, who serve as leadership um, in this project. So. <laughs> One exciting example for faculty innovation comes from our computer technology instructor, Bruce Elgort, who is now using robots, AKA bots, in his class as a way for his students to get answers to questions. Bot is a software program that performs automated, red, uh, uh, repetitive, predefined tasks. So the bot can currently answer 300 questions. 
Bruce has taken nine years of frequently asked questions by his students and built it in to a, a neural network for the bot to use as a knowledge base. And the bot is available 24 seven for students to ask questions, and it does. Thank you, Bruce. <laughs> We are excitedly moving towards a new degree program pending accreditation um, that will launch in the fall, offering a Bachelor of Applied Science degree in teacher education here at Clark. This is a community-driven program uh, that will provide affordable, accessible pathway to preschool through a great third grade teaching certificate, which is grounded in equity in education. Endorsements in early childhood education and bilingual education will come along with this and open the doors not only, uh, not only for workforce needs but also to create intentional opportunities for multilingual candidates to go into the field of teaching. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We give a huge shout out for the folks who are spearheading that and that's Sarah Thieberge and Megan Crozier. Mm -hmm. And thanks to the generous support for our early learning grant from the Cowlitz Tribe this fall, Child and Family Studies in Early Childhood Education Lab is developing an indoor, a large indoor motor space. This will benefit our youngest penguins in the, er, in the, uh, and, the learning, uh, and the learning of ECE students, which is early childhood education students. Our youngest penguins will have the benefit of working um, I'm sorry, our youngest penguins have also benefited from the work of our culinary students who were tasked with creating USDA compliant breakfast and lunch menus for this age group. At the Olivia Family Early Learning Center, our students wrote recipes, checked with USDA compliance, and priced the ingredients. So that's a shout out to our culinary program for their continued work. <laughs> E-learning and instructional design department continues to endeavor um, to offer professional development and assistance in creating quality course design and online teaching. This development takes the form of individual workshops and, workshop, and a workshop series covering topics like introduction to Zoom and e-learning 201, online teaching and design strategies, this benefits both distant and in-person classes and students are the recipients of that. While many have returned to campus for their education, Clark still has a growing number of fully online degrees now available for students who will benefit from the flexibility of, of an asynchronous environment to accomplish their education. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. I am excited about the, to think about the possibilities ahead of us as we break ground on our newest campus in Ridgefield. I would like to thank Caleb White and Jim Watkins, Lisa Jaber, and all of the Bashma Farm Planning Team for the countless hours of reviewing plans, <laughs> uh, blueprints, and easements, and testing wells, and a whole lot of stuff that's going in uh, to development of that campus. We are uh, excited. Last month, we were able to announce um, Mortensen and Henneberry Eddy as our de uh, design build for this new project. And we look forward to breaking ground in June, so soon, um, with the campus being up and ready maybe in 2024. As we prepare and uh, prepare uh, to build and prepare academic plans for this new building, we remain focused on community needs, fostering partnerships, and solving workforce demands through relevant and practical education. We understand that this building, the land it will be on, um, is part of the ancestral land of the Cowlitz tribe, and we will make every effort to honor and include the tribe as we envision and build the space. While I can't speak to the specifics just yet, I can assure you that I, along with Dr. Willard and representatives from the foundation and others, are in regular contact with tribal elders and stakeholders throughout this process. Clark College Foundation is currently um, engaged in a large undertaking as well with hiring a new CEO. After more than 20 years, Lisa, Lisa Jaber 
will vacate her position at the end of the school year and make way for a new leader. I look forward to supporting them in this transition, as well as furthering our relationships and helping the team with the foundation. On May 24th at the Savoring Excellence Gala, Lisa will be honored for her wonderful service and dedication to the foundation and the college. And they will also close out a very successful campaign. I look forward to that too. So who? We're just doing a few things here at the college, um, but all good things, and I'm very appreciative for everyone who's engaged in this work. Um, we now have the pleasure to hear from Madhuri Davis, who's the editor of The Indy, our school newspaper. Uh, the team at The Indy has been keeping our students updated on what's happening at the college and zeroing in on the changes that's happening at the executive cabinet level, and COVID and more, but I'm very happy to introduce Madhuri. Hello, uh, my name is Midori Davis, and I am a student reporter and a co-editor-in-chief of the Clark Indy, which is Clark College's independent student news publication. Before I speak any more about the Indy, uh, <laughs> in the spirit of ethical journalism, I would like to disclose that I planned on covering this event just as a reporter, and later writing about it. I was then invited to talk about the Indy at this address. Now, normally a reporter would not cover an event that they are participating in, but I am standing here today at this podium just to briefly tell my fellow students about myself, the Indy, and the work that we do. I was nudged towards journalism by my English 101 professor, Christina Smith. I took their class in fall of 2020. I had turned 18 that year and was eligible to vote in the presidential election. Now, English 101 is uh, all about rhetoric. I had many discussions over Zoom with Professor Smith about rhetoric in the media in general and in news covering politics. I told Professor Smith that I enjoyed watching TV interviews where journalists ask politicians tough questions that put them in the hot seat. <laughs> and that I would probably really enjoy pro uh, asking those tough questions. Professor Smith then suggested that I take Journalism 101 to see if I liked it. So I did, and things just went from there. After taking Journalism 101, Students can take Journalism 110, taught by Professor Beth Slovic, uh, which is the college news production class that makes up the majority of reporters and staff at the Indy. We write stories about things happening on campus and in our local community and publish them on our, on our website, uh, clarkindy.com. That's uh, C-L-A-R-K-I-N-D-Y.com. We have gotten um, a lot of uh, people uh, spelling the Indy as I-N-D-E, uh, I-N-D-I-E rather than with the Y. So I just wanted to clarify that. We uh, also offer paid positions at the Indy. Uh, editor positions are available to students who take the Journalism 110 class, but positions like photographer and graphic designer are also available to students outside of the class. Each quarter, we also publish a couple print magazine issues. Uh, these highlight some of our best, report, uh, best reporting of the season, and uh, I'm, I'm sure many of you have seen our blue newsstands around campus filled with the most recent issue of our magazine. Uh, feel free to take a copy next time you walk by. From this past fall quarter, we have resumed our on-campus operations. I started at the Indy last year when we were still completely online. There were many challenges that came with adjusting to a new version of normal, but I absolutely love walking into the newsroom every Monday and Wednesday morning 
and just feeling the synergy of ideas from collaborating and talking with my fellow reporters about things that are happening, the voices we amplify with our reporting, and the issues we illuminate through our stories, all written and published by students for students. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maduri. I appreciate your dedication to journalism and keeping our students engaged in college updates. <clears throat> as our time winds down, as our time together winds down, I want to return to what I talked about earlier when I said the college is in a state of becoming. And I'm laying out my own roadmap for the future, developing work that I want to do with executive cabinet and building a strong leadership team. I also want to leverage my experience as an Aspen uh, presidential fellow to provide strong, leaders, strong and steady leadership to the college. Right now, the team is still forming. Uh, we understand the impact of staff turnover can have on all of us, and that it can be challenging to, experiencing, uh, to experience shifts in our roles in workplaces. We're not alone, though. We've heard of the res we are in resignation nation now. Uh, many of my colleagues are reporting that they are seeing uh, retirement notices and resignations pretty regularly. But I promise to keep working until we get all the people in place um, and so to speak, get the right people on the bus. Some of the opportunities and challenges ahead of us will be dictated by our operating budget. We were fortunate to receive institutional cares, uh, cares is the federal funding we received um, to respond to COVID grant funding through May of 2022. This funding has covered costs related to COVID response and mitigation. We built our current year's budget utilizing funds to backfill our revenue. Due to further declining enrollments though, we are anticipating drawing an additional, uh, additional funds um, to backfill losses. As we begin budgetary planning, we're taking a realistic look um, and approach to projecting our FTEs understanding that we've seen continual enrollment decline over the past several quarters. While this realistic approach to budgeting will help us be better prepared and avoid surprises down the road, it may also demand some difficult reprioritization discussions. It is our plan to use the forthcoming strategic plan and vision to drive these discussions. And as we strive to have a budget that reflects our values, including racial equity and centering student success. What we do know is that we were fortunate to have a discretionary fund balance available to help the college um, that we, to fill those gaps that we had in the budget. And we have a commitment from the executive cabinet and from the board of trustees that those dollars would be used first. Looking back at fiscal year 2015 and 16, we served approximately 8,400 FTEs, full-time equivalents. Today, we're estimating finishing this year with 5,500 FTEs. The truth is, we are a smaller college than we were. Our area high schools are predicting and projecting lower enrollments, and this has a direct impact on us. It's important to keep in mind and as we begin to consider what we can do as a smaller college and the coming years to position ourselves to serve a variety of student populations, as well as find ways to increase revenue, um, revenue streams and revenue, uh, but also by bringing in additional students, both credit and non-credit, as well as looking at grants and other contracts. I want to remind all of you, as we head into 2022, we're ready to tackle some challenges, some we expect, some unexpected, but becoming requires patience and rigor, never giving up on the idea that there is more growing to be done. I attribute that to Michelle Obama, <laughs> not Karen's words. I wanna encourage everyone though to take a breath and to pause Yes, the college is on a journey of becoming, but so are we as individuals. We are all on our own personal journeys as well. And I want to encourage you to take a moment for self-care, 
whatever you do to take care of yourself so that you can take this journey of becoming with us. When we do the personal work, taking care of ourselves, we're much better prepared to do the work here at the college. And I will leave you today with yet another quote from Mrs. Obama. And she says, for every door that has been opened to me, I've tried to open doors for others. And here is what I have to say, finally. Let us invite one another in. Maybe then we can begin to fear less, to make fewer wrong assumptions, to let go of biases and stereotypes that unnecessarily divide us. Maybe we can better embrace ways we are the same. It is not about being perfect. It's about where you get yourself in the end. There is power in allowing yourself to be known and to be heard in owning your own voice and using it authentically. And there's grace in being willing to know and hear from others. For me, this is how we will become. Thank you. <laughs>